Hi, my name is uh, Yaniv, Machine Learning Specialist at AWS. Um, I help AWS customers to tackle their machine learning challenges. As part of my role, I'm leading the ML for Cyber domain across EMEA. It's a great opportunity to share with the community my observations and innovation opportunities. With me today is uh, Aya Lerner, data scientist at Imperva, and she will talk about one of the most interesting projects at Imperva, ML Web Application Firewall, ML WAF. Uh, I would like to start with a short story. Several months ago, I initiated a, a series of machine learning for cyber webinars uh, where each company would talk about their machine learning journey. The funny thing is most of the companies told me, hey, it's super interesting, but I would like to hear first what the others are talking about. But, but seriously, the reason is that machine learning is an essential part of the underlying technology in many of the companies. You can call it even the secret sauce. So I'm happy to see today some of uh, the great companies sharing their insights and uh, knowledge. To set the stage today, I will talk about the red ocean of cybersecurity where the competition is aggressive and, and machine learning uh, as a competitive edge. Why now, more than ever, it's time to shift gears and, and double down on machine learning. And Aya will talk about Imperva success story with uh, AWS. This is the Israeli cyber landscape. Don't be afraid, 14 unicorns without the public listed companies, hundreds of literally hundreds of great cyber companies from various domains like application security, threat intelligence, endpoint and IoT security. But the, the hardest question is how can these companies differentiate their solution from the competition? And, and the problem is even bigger. I assume it is very challenging for you to see the big picture in this slide, uh, the names and the details of the companies in, in this red ocean. And, and it might be the way how companies around the world perceive some of, of the cyber solutions and the cyber landscape. We are in the era of, of data and cyber attacks at scale. With more than 1 billion malware programs out there, 20,000 is, is the number of times average app was attacked during monthly, uh, during 2022, and 3.4 terabytes per second, uh, largest DDoS attack. And how can SOC, teams handle the data explosion and attacks. And the attackers are becoming more sophisticated. Uh, on a previous webinar, I spoke about AI-based uh, attack vectors such as uh, Molgan. It's a malware generative adversarial network. And with AI-based uh, attack vectors, attackers can potentially select the best attack vector designated for specific industry, for instance, health and hospitals, running 24 seven and critically thinking about how to at attack, execute successfully and remain undetected. According to Capgemini, one of the biggest research firms in Europe, the pace of adoption uh, of AI adoption is, is growing. Net network security with 75% is the leading domain in which cyber companies embed AI and ML in their products along with uh, data and endpoint security. But I think we just scratched the tip of the iceberg with, with relatively new domains like Kubernetes security, third-party security to prevent supply chain attacks and, and more. But, but it's not enough that companies declare that they have AI-based solution. Like it's the, like the famous story about the American AI chatbot company in which people answered manually the questions in the chat and, and you cannot fake it till you make it, it doesn't work. Research firms like Gartner are not sitting on the fence. They are raising the bar and they expect 
uh, domain leaders to embed advanced AI ML capabilities in order to achieve higher performance, precision, and recall. So why, why now? The first pillar is that AI and ML companies democratizing ML and enabling machine learning practitioners to innovate faster. ML platforms like SageMaker expedite the interval between research to POC and POC to production. Along with uh, auto ML capabilities to run quick experiments and fail or succeed fast. The second pillar is that NVIDIA recently launched uh, NVIDIA Morpheus. It's a bespoke ML framework for cyber use cases that enables cybersecurity developers to create optimized AI pipelines for various use cases like filtering, processing, and classifying large volumes of, of real-time data and, and obviously pre-trained models. The third pillar, in my opinion, is the rise of NLP. One of the biggest challenges of, of cyber domain is lack of labeled data. And the trend of, of self-supervised learning is growing constantly. Essentially, it's uh, for those who are not familiar with, with self-supervised, essentially it's, it's a machine learning process where the model trains uh, itself to learn one part of the input from another part of the input. And, and today you can find on Hugging Face pre-trained BERT models uh, for security domain, uh, like SecBERT and uh, SecRoberta based on, on Roberta model created by uh, Facebook. AWS's machine learning services have already been utilized by more than 100,000 customers around the globe to gain a competitive edge. And Imperva is one of them. Uh, they created a process that exp expedites uh, machine learning development and uh, collaboration while reducing the cost of, of SageMaker notebooks by at least 25% and reducing the overhead time most of the researchers spend on installations and waiting for instances to be ready to work. So it's a good segue to hear uh, about this success story from uh, Aya. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ping me and thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Anil, for your insights. I'm Aya, and I'm a data scientist at Imperva. In this talk, I'll tell you how we use the existing ML platforms to develop a model that finds new, unknown web attacks. There are many threats Imperva protects from, starting from threats from outside the organization to threats from within. And in this talk, we will focus on application security. Uh, the product is called Web Application Firewall, also called WAF. The WAF protects against attacks directed at the web application on the application layer, the HTTP protocol. The WAF manages huge amount of traffic. Each month, there are about 1.5 trillion requests that are processed. And out of those requests, 45 billion are web attacks. Impera protects around 6,000 enterprise customers from 20 different industries. So we have plenty of highly diverse data. The WAF is located between the client application and the web application we protect. Each request coming from the client application goes through the WAF. The WAF analyzes it. And if it is malicious, the request is blocked blocked and otherwise it is passed on to the web application. The WAF, the WAF must always be up to date because there are always new vulnerabilities exposed. The security researchers constantly monitor many vulnerability sources and they also actively research for new threats. Each new threat and vulnerability is prioritized and assessed. The security research 
researchers decide if and how the work should be updated. This chart shows the increase of traffic in the past three years. You can see that since uh, 2019, the number of requests increased by about 350%. In this chart, you see the increase in the number of attacks over the past three years. You can see here that the, since the 2019, the number of attacks increased by 200%. The security researchers spend many efforts to keep the WAF updated, but there are more attacks, so they have more work than ever. On the other hand, we also have more data, which calls for machine learning solutions. For example, the model I'm going to talk about, the model that finds new and unknown attacks. Uh, this is the ML workflow we use at the data science team. We have a data lake that has data from many sources. One of the sources is the WAF. The WAF sends events to some ETLs, and the output of the ETL is sent to S3, where the data lake is. When we do the data exploration, we normally use notebooks, for example, Zeppelin and SageMaker notebook. Where when we are ready to start building a model, we use an in-house flow. It does the pre-processing using SQL on Pina and Python on Kubernetes with EC2s. When we want to build a model, we use SageMaker API to train and test the model. And once the model is ready to be deployed, we use all the platforms for the full flow. A quick reminder, we want to build a model that finds new attacks that are unknown to the WAF. So the data we used is request traffic labeled by the WAF. We consider those labels uh, extremely reliable. And the data can be divided to two types. One is clean traffic, meaning the WAF did not find any attacks on it. And the other type is attack traffic where they were found an attack. Attacks can be divided to several types, and each type has unique properties. Some examples are SQL injection, cross-site scripting, remote code execution, and there are more. For each model, we use only a single type of attack. This is an example of the model of the data we use for the model. You can see at the top, there's a, the source IP. This is the HTTP request. Uh, you see the method. We have the, the content, the URL, and the question in this case. And we also have some HTTP headers. And we also have some more enrichment in addition to that. The features can also be divided to two groups. One is the request content features, and the other is the request source features. The content features are based on the content of the HTTP request, like the URL and the, and the query string. In the content features, the most important feature type is the engrams. Using uh, TFIDF, we found, found the most indicative engrams to the clean traffic, and we did the same with the attack traffic, and we used those two lists as Boolean features. We also use statistical features based on expert knowledge, for example, special cortex count and keyword count. Uh, if you'd like to read some more about the engrams, you can see our blog post. And that, download the slide and use this link to see the blog post. The source features are based on information about the sender of the request. For example, we use IP reputation, which is a score we keep for each IP based on the history of, of uh, attacks. And we also use client application reputation based on a classification mechanism we have that gives us the client and the client type. For example, is it a browser or a malicious bot? 
uh, this is an example of the data we saw features. So you see at the top we have source IP and we know it, it, have a, it has a past of many attacks, so it's high risk. The user agent is of a of URL lib, which is a Python library uh, that automates HTTP requests and can be used in uh, attack tools. And the content, you see the Spring CMD exe, which is a known attack. Uh, it tries to, to run the uh, command chain. The foregrounds of the Spring would be cmd dot, uh, dot exe, md dot e, and so on. And yet we decided not to use features from the source. Why? The source features are a great indicator of an attack and we do use them for other projects. If the source is likely to be an attacker, then it is also very likely that request is an attack. But our goal is not to find any attack. It is to find new attacks of a specific type. That is why we want the model to train on the content features and not the source features. So now we have a trained model with the right labels and the right features. How do we find potential new attacks with it? So we have a daily job that trains the model on three days of traffic from about a month ago. Uh, we use that model to run inference on yesterday's data, data. The output of the model is a list of requests with a probability of being an attack. That list is passed on to analysis, so we can narrow down to the list of potential attacks. The large circle shows the two classifications done by the WAF. The left side is the clean traffic, meaning there was the, the WAF did not find any attack on it. And the right side is the attack traffic. The potential new attacks are in the red circle within the left part. It has requests that were classified by the WAF as clean traffic, but the model did classify the requests as attacks. This list of potential attacks is passed on to security researchers and they decide if the WAF should be updated. So some results we had, we ran several experiments to measure the model's performance. The most relevant is the clean traffic experiment like you, you saw in previous slides. And that means that we ran on data that the WAF did not classify as an attack. In this case, we only have one label. That's why we chose to use the true negative rate as a score. And when using low attack probability of 0.6, we, the score was about 99%. That means that the model classifies very much like the WAF. Another interesting result is the number of highly likely new attacks. There are only eight out of 50,000 requests that are uh, attacks with probability higher than 95%. This creates a short and manageable list for the security researchers. On the first month, using the output of the model, the map WAF was updated based on the model's output, blocking about 4.6 million requests. We also wanted to see how well the model does on zero-day attacks. Well, Log4Shell is a well-known vulnerability in the Log4J library. It, it's a very popular library. The model found 50% of all Log4J attacks on the first day of attack. In the more recent Spring Core vulnerability, we got similar results, and the model identified attacks at the same time as the security researchers. There are three main points to take from this talk. You saw we have more attacks, but we also have more data, and that enables us to use ML solutions. Keeping data becomes easier thanks to many available tools. I think what you're 
what data your organization keeps and what you can do with it. You also saw how we used an existing product to label our data in an easy and reliable way. Think which product you can use to label your data. And last, you saw how we use existing ML platforms to speed up model development. Using existing platforms can help you focus on, on the data science research instead of technical work. Thank you.